All right, all right, so Chef Matt here, like usual. I, um, my heart's with you drivers out there that just lost their job at Celadon because Celadon went out of business and filed bankruptcy, all right? Uh, well, my parents filed for bankruptcy because my dad convinced my mom that it was the only way out and she wound up getting screwed in the end. That would be you drivers in this particular situation. Y'all got screwed. That is definitely very wrong of a company to do. Very wrong. Okay? Super wrong. You all have grounds for a class action lawsuit. I don't give a rip what anyone says. I'm not a lawyer. But I know grounds for a class action lawsuit when I see one. Especially, you know, lace ops, they already have grounds for a lawsuit established. This can add grounds to that if you're a lace op. That's the misclassification thing. There you go. Those of you who are, um, Stranded or even Celadon Company, former Celadon Company drivers trying to get home. The hard times make the good times that much better. All right. Band together. Class action lawsuit Celadon for an unlawful termination of yeah, termination of employment without proper notice. Believe it or not. There are now specialized laws regarding that. And understand this. There's going to be a lot of pushback from Celadon lawyers saying, no, you can't do that. That's ground. We file bankruptcy. Bullshit. No company has any right to do that to people. You're not an end user. You're a human being eh, operating a, eh, via a piece of heavy equipment at high rates of speed. Okay? You work for... You know, don't believe a word Celadon says as to what you are and what you're not allowed to do. When it comes to the you're not allowed to do side. They're attempting to cover their own butts for their own stupidity and their own dehumanizing of people. I encourage you all, band together. Trucking nomads is assisting in that. Y'all, if y'all have, have, were doing anything with Celadon at the time of them closing down, whether you're a shipper, a receiver, or a driver, or in general, someone who was really, whose life was really put in jeopardy, because it really is. You know, as a driver, your life can be put in jeopardy if your paycheck gets taken away from you that fast out on the road. I always preach and practice what I preach to the best of my ability. Keep your tank full as much as possible, especially if you work for a company, uh, as, and even more so if you're an OTR driver. You know, in general, out there on the road, keep your tank full. You may see that tank being full as excess weight. This time of year, it is a definite help. You never know when you're going to be stuck on a mountain pass waiting for conditions to improve, unable to go anywhere, stranded in the middle of nowhere. You never know. Every opportunity you get, top up your tank. I don't care if you work for Prime. I don't care if you work for Swift. I don't care if you work for your mommy and daddy. I don't care who you work for. Keep your tanks full. No matter what, keep them full. Don't ever let a dispatcher tell you that you're not allowed to. Don't ever let anyone tell you you're not allowed to. If you cannot, in the wintertime, if you cannot roll with a full tank, 
do not accept that load, that is a, that is putting your jet your safety in, in jeopardy as much as it even more so than anyone else's safety. Other than you know, and it also puts a towman's life literally right there in jeopardy more so than yours. More so. Please keep a full tank to the best of your ability. Every opportunity you get to fuel up, do it. All right, I'm saying that as a guy who runs a virtual trucking company. I personally encourage all of my drivers, keep your tanks full. You never know when it's going to save your butt and my butt from a tow bill within the VTC. But you know what? Understand this, people. We're all human. We all make mistakes. But what Celadon, it was no mistake. It was intentional. I can guarantee you that. There has already been way too many instances where this has happened in the year 2019. We cannot allow this to go yeah, yeah, unforeseen and unseen. And you know, we cannot, as human beings, allow that to slide. Understand this. As a VTC owner, I personally have some of my own money tied up into the online services of even regular truckers, believe it or not. Okay. <laughs> I get it. The ELD mandates make things harsh. But you got to work them. Force dispatching in any way, shape, or form is absolutely... And I, I say this wholeheartedly and humbly. Forced dispatching is unacceptable both in morality and in the eyes of the federal government. There's a website you can go to to report that. It's right up there on the FMCSA website. Not that difficult to find. Um, FMCSA.gov, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong down there in the comments. My heart goes out to all of you in Celadon that have been absolutely inhumanely treated by Celadon closing like this. I am totally against an, uh, an employer terminating employment without two-week notice because if an employee were to do that to the employer, the employer has the right to sue them. Well, you know what? Don't let your employer n n beat you down. A lot of employers are extremely abusive in general. Don't tolerate it. If you go to work, imagine this, okay? You literally go to work one morning, for those of you who are not truck drivers, you go to work one morning, you literally walk in the door, boss says, we got to let all of you go. I'm sorry, it is what it is. But everybody freaking paid, paid their fuel to get to their day job, right? That's wrong in my book. You can't accept that kind of stuff because you all need to realize there are way more people that are literally one paycheck away from literally losing everything than anyone ever will realize. I myself fall into that category in the sense of I'm one paycheck away from losing my living quarters my storage unit, my transportation, aside from what friends and family are able to provide for me. Other than that, you know, very little of it. And I'm, I really do my best to set money aside all the time. Okay. Y'all got to understand this. When you have, when you are forced to go on unemployment, you're literally going on only one-fourth of what your income is today yeah, as employed. One-fourth. Don't like that? Don't accept the minimum wage job. You're only worth what you're willing to accept yeah, for payment. So, if you're 
at the job and your employer is refusing to give you the raise that you know you deserve and need and are not going to blow it on drugs and whatnot, and it's actually for a good reason you ask for a raise, you know, let's say, you know, you're expecting now and, you know, you got to have a little more money for the baby. That kind of stuff really is reasonable. And you can always request other positions within a company that do not apply to the minimum wage only factor of things. My godfather, I'm not going to name him on this platform. He has worked for a very large company and he even admits that a lot of the time when he saw a minimum wage worker, and yes, he was actually in a management position, if I remember correctly. But in general, he always did everything in his power when he saw a minimum wage worker that was definitely worth more than what minimum wage could ever compensate him or her for. He did everything he could to get that person off a dead end and a paying job and onto a higher paying job where you can actually go up without having to fight it. There's a lot of crap employers out there. Anything franchised in general is going to be one you got to be very careful of. And even more so when they're globally franchised. Be very careful. No matter what, always set a chunk of your paycheck aside and never touch it. And label that your, I just got your jobless fund. Because it's going to happen. It happens to everybody. It actually has happened to myself. And I've learned. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you ladies and gentlemen have learned something. And feel more empowered with this video. Please, please please hear me out on this whole video Rewatch it as many times as you need to you are not a nobody you are somebody there is nobody that is any more special than anyone there's no no one is any less important than anyone if an employer takes away your ability to financially survive like yeah, sell it on is done and huge quantities of other companies in the year 2019 this is unacceptable it is literally in the it has gone past the mid 400 mark for this year and we're not even done with this year today is saturday december 7th this is a 31 day month the end of this month is not only the end of this year, it's the end of this decade. And that which we do in this decade is carried on into the next decade of what is allowed to do. Do not tolerate it. Hammer on it. Don't tolerate mistreatment of from employers, but also understand that you can be at fault at times too. We all make mistakes. We're all human. But what companies do when they go out of business and give their employees no warning that they went out of business... I'm from a small town, people. In small towns, that doesn't happen. Yeah, and, and when it does, that, that company in any way, shape, or form is never allowed back into to the small town for a lot of reasons. Okay. Y'all got to understand that there is a business that was in this town and left it on good terms. They're welcome back. They just needed to restructure their inventory. Do it best. Please come back to my you know, parts you know, of the Pacific Northwest. I need your products. You had a lot of products that were very valuable to this town. You had a lot of um, a lot of products that the other hardware store don't even come close to supply. Please come back. Also, I encourage people. Stand up for your rights. Stand up for what is moral. 
Don't just worry about what's, what the government says is your rights. Stand up for what you believe in. Fight for your right to be a human, to be someone who can uh, live, that actually wants to keep the job a job long term and are happy with their employer in general. You've got to fight for you know, this stuff to stop happening or it's going to continue to happen. Over 450 uh, trucking companies closed down this year so far. That is more than double 2018. More than double. And they're claiming it's all about bad times and stuff and not enough freight. Bull! Not enough valuable freight uh, being transported. And the truck's not being properly loaded. Honestly, I feel if your truck is sent rolling with any less than you know, 25,000 pounds of cargo and it's a class and it's a class you know, 7 or even a class 8 tractor, don't take it. Don't accept it. It's too light. A hot shot can handle that. Hot shot truckers are there for a reason. They're, they specialize in those loads. Let them have those loads. But the big, heavy highway drivers, y'all are there for the big weights. Y'all are the heavy weights. Hot shots, they're the medium weights. Thank you all for watching. Tune in next time. And by the way, a rate, you know, rate, comment, subscribe, show your support to other drivers out there. We appreciate that people banding together in 2019. There have been way more lawsuits this year alone in this decade than there has been in the other nine years of this decade. Thank you. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. If a company's got the right to sue their employees, the employees for darn sure have the right to sue their employers, whether it was passed or they got fired or not. They have the right to sue their employers. It is fair game. And lawyers are really taking sides with the underdogs more and more this year than ever before, especially the drivers of big rigs. Be safe out there. Do what you can to get home without putting your life in jeopardy and other lives in jeopardy. The good times are only made better by the bad times. Celadon drivers understand this. There's no reason to harm yourself. It's temporary. Don't take the permanent solution to a temporary problem. There are many of you in this situation. Too many not to have a voice. Okay. Please understand this. There are too many of you drivers out there for that company for you guys not to be able to have a voice. There's too many. You have a voice. A big one. This is only what? First, second day after it shutting of it being shut down and over half of the drivers from what I have not been able to find out are actually confirmed to be stranded. Go over to Trucking Nomads. I'm actually encouraging you as Celadon drivers. Go over to Trucking Nomads channel. He just posted a live stream about an hour and a half, two hours before this video was made. For, specifically for you as Celadon drivers. Thank you. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful night. Be safe. Do what you got to do to get home safely without anyone else being jeopardized to their own safety. I love what you all do. I appreciate what you all do out there you know, driving big rigs. I do it in the simulator all day, every day. I love it that much. But quite frankly, it's gaming and... It's not real world money that I'm making. Really wish it were, but please understand my heart's out there with you. There's a lot of stupid drivers. I've seen it firsthand. 
not just walking, but also when I was in driver's ed, I also saw it running under the farming license. I saw it too much and I still see it way too much. Thank you again. And please, please band together. You all do have a voice. Use it. Please use it. Don't be afraid. The First Amendment protects you in this one. And it, and the First Amendment is protected by the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment and the First Amendment are both protected by the Fifth Amendment. Seeing the patterns here? Thank you. And I do appreciate all of you. I really do.